Hi there, how's it going? I'm Rich Coons. This is Diligent Visual, my channel where I like to provide content for artists and in some cases educators. I am an art educator, so I guess that would make sense. So we're starting off our school year in a situation where students cannot physically be in the classroom. As educators, we want to provide the best content education for our students that we can. So we're starting to utilize tools where we can remotely meet with them. A lot of people have gravitated to the obvious place, Zoom, Google Meet. In a bad situation like we're in where things have changed, there's a couple of positives and one of them is I think we need to appreciate and be grateful for the fact that we do have the ability to connect with our students remotely through video. 20 years ago, would have been an impossibility. I think if this all happened early in my career, I probably would have just quit and become a farmer or something. I don't know. Not that I could be a farmer. I would probably not be very good at it. What I'm trying to currently do is figure out how I can connect with my students and make it the best experience possible. I think one of the things that we have available to us that could really help is a thing called OBS, Open Broadcast Software. It's free, it's amazing, and a lot of people that are content creators have been using it for a long time, so that you can do some amazing things. Essentially what you're doing is you're setting up a scene as though you are the director of a, a television production, uh, you're able to have multiple cameras, you're able to have multiple audio sources, a thing that is way more interactive and way more engaging and way more fluid than just a talking head. What I want to do today is I want to just walk you through the very basic setup of how you can connect OBS to Google Meet. There are additional challenges when you're using a Mac. It can be done. I'm still in the process of trying to work out any of the little intricacies that are just not the bugs that are getting in the way. And when I do that, I, I'll definitely provide that information for you. So for Mac users, I think we can do this. But the situation is a PC. You're seeing a broadcast, and, and I want to demonstrate to you why it would be better to use something like OBS rather than just doing a straight zoom. So here is a, an example of my screen with a ticker on the bottom. I could switch over a scene just by the, with the, with the click of a button, just like that. I've got a sidebar. You could have notes up here. You could have um, some sort of static image floating there. I mean, you have to set this up in advance, but you can see me behind there a little bit. That's kind of cool. Um, and then I could switch over to something like this, where I'm going to talk to all of you about this particular thing that we're talking about here. So let's say I just want to pull this up on my actual screen. So, and on the side over here, we've got a slideshow going on. You've got, um, you know, student work that you wanted to post in, in this particular situation. That's some of my work. And then I can just go over here and flip back over to uh, this one, which is my, the primary means that I'm going to be pushing things out to people. So you've got this overlay, you've got this wallpaper in the background. It's all it's all very customizable. And this is not a tutorial in the full OBS setting all of that up. Um, that is a, a conversation all in itself. Um, so this is really for people who are already familiar with OBS and are already kind of astute in terms of the, the use of technology. There are plenty of sources out there though. You know, on YouTube, there are people that are amazing that show you how to set it up from the ground up. So you would want to install OBS, go through that tutorial to get all of these scenes ready. I think it is worth the investment. That's why I'm doing it. I think it, it definitely ups the quality of the content and and that provides a better experience for our students and i think we we owe it to them to try to do the best that we can in a in a bad situation i have two monitors that's another thing that is useful you don't need two computers so don't think that this is you know multiple thousands of dollars it's you find an old monitor somewhere and you set it up so that you can uh, you do a side by side so that people are not seeing on your screen the OBS uh, platform. It actually gets really weird. I'm going to show you how this is going to 
kind of gets strange here. So you see, when I pull this over from my second monitor, I'm like, you're seeing a bunch of me. And you can see here how I have my my scene set up down here at the bottom, and this is where I would, would change from, from each one. So if I click on this one, we're gonna see something like this, and we're gonna go to this one, and these are all individual scenes that I've set up in advance. The scenes are made up of sources, so you can see that I've got the ticker, I could turn it on and off, if I wanted to, I can uh, get rid of my webcam. If you're thinking, you know, I don't want people looking at me anymore, I can just box that out, take the background out, or bring it bring it back. So you, your sources make up the scene, and you're able to transition from scene to scene just by simply clicking on it. Again, you're creating a full out broadcast. You're not just sitting there as a talking head in a meeting. So it's much more interactive, it's much more engaging, and I, again, I think that's what we need. So you're going to need this thing called Virtual Cam, and in order to get that, I'm going to take you through that, but I want to um, I want to move this out of the way because it's just, it really freaks me out when I see like 10,000 of myself in perspective. Go to OBS Studio, it stands for Open Broadcaster Software. Uh, if I go to the forum, and then I look down here, there's an area called Resources. And if I go into Resources, you can go into OBS Studio Plugins. And the way that I found this, it's kind of a this virtual cam thing. Again, if you're working on a PC, this is going to work. If you're working on a Mac, there's some other things, but we'll we'll try to get to that later. Downloads maybe and hit filter there. You know you know that this is probably downloaded a lot. Okay, so I'm looking at this and, and going, well, OBS Virtual Cam 2.04 was downloaded 843,000 times. Um, and then OBS 2.05, which is the more updated version, seems to have been downloaded 297,000 times. So I'm going to go for that one, right? I've already done this, but if you click on it, I'll just go ahead and click on it. There's a couple of warnings here. Uh, like one note is that the horizontal flip that is an option in the virtual cam will crash your computer. So don't use it. If you need to flip your video, do it in the source. So if students are saying to you, um, yeah, I'm in class, but uh, you're backwards and so is all the words like I can't even see what you're doing you need to flip that in the receiving end which means that you're gonna flip that in uh, your Google or your zoom or your Skype uh, so if you have this virtual uh, plugin you're gonna go to download you're gonna click on it and you're gonna install it it's that simple you just click through it you yes 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 we're good to go okay it's safe it's easy it's right there for you I've already done it so let's switch back into the weird view where I have my OBS set up and click on tools and then you can see virtual cam is an option. You won't see this unless you install it. And then another thing I notice is if you had OBS open and then you install the virtual cam plugin, it's not going to show up until you close OBS and reopen it. When you reopen it and go to tools, you will see the virtual cam button. So don't freak out and start commenting and saying, you idiot, I did it and it doesn't work. Not that you would call me an idiot, but I'm just trying to help. Now when we go to virtual cam, we need to turn it on. It's not on automatically. So it's there under tools, you need to turn it on. I wouldn't probably select auto start because I just don't know if I'm going to always use this. Um, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. I'm, I'm pretty much just going to leave it as it is. And down here you can see there's a little button that says start. So if I click start, virtual cam is started. You don't have to worry about leaving this open. You can close it. You don't need that window right in your face the whole time. So we're basically done at this point setting things up. Once you have your sources and your scenes and your audio and you've got your virtual cam plugin, now it's time to go to your platform where you're going to be sending this out to students. And I didn't think this was going to work initially, so I started trying to figure out a way that I can make private videos on YouTube and send each student in my class an email link to that video, and then I would be streaming live. 
it, it, it really didn't work out. That was probably like, I don't know, 10 hours by itself of failure. Okay, so let's go ahead now and go to Chrome again. Okay, so we're on Google. We're going to go ahead and go to here, your little dots. Make sure you're logged into whatever you want to do. And you can see the little icon here for Google Meet. Simple. Um, you want to set up a, a code, a link code, so that your students can join you. And like just here in this preview window, you can kind of get an idea of what I'm, what I'm shooting for here. Sure, this is great that you have 10 people in your meeting over here and you could see all their faces and their names are under there and they're talking and we're collaborating and we're just having a good time. But your main presentation, like the main person that they're looking at, that main screen, I don't want it to just be another floating head that's talking at them. I want to be able to push out a broadcast. So you're going to go into your meeting. I'm going to start an instant meeting right here because I don't have any friends at the moment. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and join the meeting now. You could hear that little sound hopefully on the desktop, which would mean that my that my desktop audio is working. I don't want to add other people because again, I don't have any friends aside from you and you're already here. If I take this and I move it over here, What's happening now is I'm able to monitor on the other monitor. I'm able to see what's going on in my meeting. Okay, and I have OBS open too, and I'm not going to share that screen with you, that other monitor. So I'm looking up off into the distance there at my Google Meet. Well, if you go down here into settings, it's not going to be like this right away for you. It's not just going to automatically know what you're trying to do. The first thing is the audio. Make sure that you have audio, you've got your microphone set up, and you've got your speakers. I would recommend that you have headphones because if you don't have headphones, your speakers are going to pick up your microphone and you're going to get this endless tunnel of, you get, hello, 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 hello. Is everyone there? There, there, there. Uh, and people will be annoyed with you within 30 seconds. So make sure that you have a microphone and you have headphones that are plugged into said microphone. That's a big part of this. We switch over to video. Um, we want to make sure that our camera is set not to our webcam, but to our OBS camera. This is that virtual camera that you set up. I would also recommend that you don't mess with this. The standard resolution, this 360p thing, if you mess with that and you make it higher quality, you're like, yeah, for sure. Let's go 720. Let's go high def. Great. That's great. But it's not going to be great when you're crashing everybody's system and they just don't have the resource. If everyone had the perfect situation with their internet and Wi-Fi and whatever else we've got going on, that would be fine. But I would not mess with that at all. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Done. And then we're good to go. So I'm going to move this again over to the other side. If I went like this through our, our meeting and you were seeing that and... And you had like your little sidebar open over here and you saw all your friends and your classmates and you could switch over and you could mute your mic and you could listen to what I'm saying. Isn't that so much better? Isn't that so much better? I, I think it is. I mean, I think you have to agree. You don't have to agree, certainly, but come on. For real? This new tab over into here. And we're just, we're, we're teaching our class. We're doing our thing. And I say, everybody... I got it. I, I need you to check this out on the internet. How about we talk about how I do my online training? Let's do. Let's make a, a short advertisement for my friends at Wasatelier. Okay, so there is um, the owner and, and uh, head instructor of Wasatelier, Jeff Jeff Watts. Um, so let's go ahead and play his video real quick, and I just want to show you guys uh, what he's all about. First, he's got to sit down. Right, everyone, welcome to another Watts Weekly. There he is. I, I could turn this up if I wanted to. I hope the, um, the terms moving along nicely. I could turn it down if I want to. And the actual streaming term. For those of you I can mute it if I want the, to. Um, again, the month to month. Should we mute it? I yeah, hope, let's uh, mute it. So now you shouldn't hear him. You should only hear me, and he's he's doing his thing. And then let's bring him back in. And there's so much good stuff in there. That's it. That's all I got. I, uh... I hope that helped you. Um, so I'm making this video to save people the multiple tens of hours that I've stressed out 
and sweat this whole situation because, you know, when the lights go on uh, and it's the first day of school, kind of want to be ready to go. I don't know about you, but I want to be ready to go. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this content, you like this video, send me a comment. Uh, if you have questions, send me a comment. If you like the content, please like it, share it, hit subscribe. I'll see you guys around. Take care. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Like, there's like a little button that they put on the laptop or something, and then they say click it, and then you can never even miss a video. Hmm. That's if you subscribe.